Hello, I'm Kristen. I have been a police wife for 10 years, just celebrated our 10 year anniversary last week. And I'm so excited to continue the series on solo parenting and motherhood or parenting as a police wife or police girlfriend if you're a girlfriend um, and continue to talk about this. In my last video, if you haven't done so, check it out. I talked about just general like solo parenting, survival or thriving in solo parenting tips for police wives. And in that video, I told you I'd make another video. It has taken me a while to do it, but here I am on um, like baby and toddler stage and then also school age. So I said I made two videos, but I think I'm going to combine them. So here they are. So I'm going to give you tips kind of as we went through the baby and toddler stage that really helped me and my husband um, during that time. And then the second part of this video will be on school age. So if you have school age, I will do a timestamp. And so you could just skip to that if you want to hear kind of my tips on that. Um, I also want to let you know before I get started that I do have a police wife devotional. You can check that out in the description. It is a book um, and I'm available in multiple different formats based on your need, even Kindle or um, paperback, um, e-copy, stuff like that. And I go through some of the things I talk about. There's chapters on these um, and Bible verses that support them. I share raw, 42 raw stories of my police marriage. Um, and it kind of goes through <clears throat> chronologically. And then I support those stories with a Bible verse and a prayer for reflection. So I hope that you enjoy that. And then I also want to share one more resource. If you are solo parenting, especially in the summer where moms like me are home more with our kids, um, I have a fun kind of like summer bucket list that I'm going to share with you in the description. That is a free download um, and it has like 25 different activities. I have a blog to go with that. So I will link that below as well. So definitely check those out for resources. Okay. So this video was really important to me to talk about um, like the baby time and toddler time because that was actually the time that I like struggled the most with um, being a police wife mostly because Rick and I had gotten married we were long distance for two years which I'm going to talk about in my next video you guys I'm going to make a video on how to stay connected um, regardless of being long distance of just in in this life um, as a police wife and in police marriage but anyway so we had been long distance for two years prior to me basically getting pregnant that second year. And then luckily I got a job locally and I moved in with Rick officially for full time because I had come back and forth between where I was living and LA. Um, I moved in with him basically the month we were having Maverick full time. Okay, so then within a month, like I give birth to Maverick, our first baby. I was a really high anxiety mom. I try to think, I, I think I have chilled out a little bit, but I really just had a lot of nervousness about like keeping him alive. Like, oh, is he happy? Like if he's crying, I was like stressed out and I probably need some medication. Like thinking back, Rick dealt with me so well, but um, Rick did take some time off. Like he's so blessed. And I think that that's something that we don't acknowledge enough that like our spouses have really good benefits and they can take that time if they feel comfortable. Rick had been on as a police officer for a while so he felt comfortable doing that. So he took like a month off with me and then he goes back to work and he was working in intensive gang unit at the time, lots of overtime. He also was going to be trying out for SWAT soon. So he's working a lot of overtime. He's hardly ever home. I just moved to LA. LA is not a place where you can make friends really easily quickly. We didn't have a ton of family around. Like my mom, Rick's mom would visit a lot and I had an awesome aunt here locally that could help and she did help a lot. But it was like basically when I went back, back to work, um, she would help us in last minute helping to watch him and that was amazing um, to watch Maverick. But during that kind of summer, we had Maverick in May, during that summer, um, once Rick went back, I was like alone a lot, right? With this little baby and actually Maverick looking back was a happy baby overall, but obviously he cried just like any baby did. And I felt kind of like stuck in the house. So one thing that helped me was to get out of the house. Um, I signed us up for Gymboree baby classes and baby classes hopefully are in a lot of places like in suburbs or cities. Um, or if your church has baby classes, if you're in a more rural area, I highly recommend it. It's not for the baby, it's for you. <laughs> I think it does help babies to get out and experience some new things. 
um, and get used to noise and other look, looking at things and stuff like that. But it does help you to be around other parents, right? So I signed him up for that. And then luckily I had done um, prenatal yoga locally within the area where we lived, even though I wasn't living there full time, whenever I would come back home, I would go to um, this prenatal yoga class. And somebody in that group created this Facebook group for babies who were born that year and moms. And so it was basically like a mom Facebook group. And then we would schedule like play dates and um, that really saved me. Those play dates, um, I really wanted to attend as many as those of those as I could because it got me out of the house. So I feel like making sure you have a reason to leave the house and socialize with other people, like if you don't have a lot of friends locally yet or family, it's so important. Um, and so that really helped me and I highly recommend that you do the same. Get involved in some kind of like a baby or mom group and go, even if you're shy, if you are feeling lonely, just go. You don't have to talk a lot, um, but it will help you to feel less alone. Some other things I highly recommend that I did were mom workout groups. So we have something called Fit for Mom or Stroller Strides that is, I think, even like international now, and I will link their website below, um, or you can look them up online and see if you have one locally. They're not in every city. Um, you could even start one. So they are little like franchises owned by basically, usually moms. Um, ours has been owned by a mom locally here. And um, I would go to those and it, it's a workout like you, it's usually in the morning and they have it almost every day, Monday through Friday um, and maybe even a Saturday class. And you go early like 8.30 or nine and um, it's about an hour and your baby is supposed to either be on in the carrier on you or they can be in the stroller and then they guide you through like a workout. So it's really good for you physically. And then also there's like usually just some like camaraderie and just sharing about like having a baby, right? And going through that. And so that really helped. And then even when I had Leonidas or second, I had kind of stopped, but I went back to doing that because I knew it would be good for me to like be around other moms again. And I remember having Maverick in the stroller. I only had a single stroller and then Leonidas in the baby carrier. So I was like fully, had a lot going on there, but I just made it work. And um, again, I didn't go for too long. I could just kind of filled a gap for me and a space in that I needed. And then I also found another mom workout group at a gym. It was some kind of like a jujitsu or karate gym, but this one mom just held a group there. And then they even had a little playroom. It was super casual when I first went and your babies and toddlers could kind of like be with you when you're working out. And then there was some liability challenges. And so then they wanted the kids like in the playroom. My boys did not want to go in the playroom. So once they made it a little stricter, I had to kind of sign out of that. Um, and, but I think I've met people through all of these things and that really helped me so much to just make some friends. So I have two friends now still from the mom group that I went to and um, I'm so grateful for them. Like as now Maverick is eight and I'm still friends with them. One of them married Rick's bestie this last year and a half ago, I think. And that is so cool. Um, so you just never know what's gonna come from these. In that time, it, it serves a space for you to just be around other moms. So I highly recommend that. Okay, so that's helping you to get out of the house and be social. And then the next tip I have is to ask for help. So I know I talked about this in my last video, but I wanna be really specific about what we did during this baby and toddler time. So for the first year of Maverick's life, Rick and I thought we would juggle um, kind of his daycare between just the two of us. Like we could just take this on <laughs> and that was crazy. Looking back, like it was not a good choice. So uh, it really made us miserable for us. Like Rick was working mostly nights. Um, it was kind of like more like swing shift. So he would get off, he was supposed to get off at like 3 p.m. But almost always there was overtime. So he'd get off maybe 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. Sometimes he wasn't going to make it home in time and I would teach at nine. Also, logistically thinking like he was going to come home and then watch our baby. When the heck is he sleeping, right? Like that doesn't make sense at all. Um, and so that was in the fall, probably like August or September when I went back to work. We did that for the whole year and it was awful. Like nobody was sleeping. A lot of times Rick's overtime was not 
it wasn't working, right? Like he would stress me out because he was gonna get out too late and I had to teach at 9 a.m. or something like that. Um, and so thank God we had my aunt who would call kind of last minute and I would say like, can you come over just for a few hours and watch him while I go teach a class? It was nuts. Okay, so we had a friend who was from the mom group um, that I met her in and she's the one that married our best, Rick's bestie, which is so cool. She had told us that she started her son in a home daycare because we checked out some professional like preschool daycares and I didn't love them. I didn't love the idea of leaving like my baby my little baby yet there and so I mean by the time it was like next summer came around I usually have summers off and professors have like a teacher schedule that's when we started exploring this idea more but he was still little like still just crawling not walking yet and I just was like not comfortable with leaving him at the preschool so and you had to pay like basically full-time you had to pay a lot of money and I didn't need full-time I needed like three days a week so anyway we found out about this home daycare and I visited it and I was like, this is perfect because she kind of kept, it was only six kids and she kept them on like a routine that was similar to mine. And I just felt like it was more like going to a family member's home. So I felt really good about that. So um, we ended up going with her um, and we kept our boys there until Maverick was four. So he went from age one to four. And then when we were talking about having Leonidas, I asked Rick, like, do you think we can afford daycare for two boys? Because for two kids, we didn't know we had a boy yet. But, um, and I thought that would like just be really important to us, just have those three days a week. I think Maverick used to just go from like 8.30 to three or something like that. It wasn't a full, full day. She had availability from pretty early to like 5.30. Um, and so Leonidas started at like 10 or 11 months. Um, and I just started him like kind of like just a little bit in the summer and then those three days a week in the fall. Um, so both of them, we were able to swing it that for that first 10 months, we, I took off one semester. So a few months, um, postpartum or pater maternity leave. And then the Rick's mom came and stayed with us during our second semester. Cause actually the daycare provider did not have space for Leonidas yet. And we were so blessed that then she did. So Rick's mom it was a blessing to come stay with us and then um we were able to have our needs met and like have someone that we really trusted um i know in law enforcement families it can be really hard to find someone that you trust to watch your baby um so that is something that i want you to know you still can we have have found two um babysitters too who babysit sporadically for us and they have been the same too, like the whole time. Um, since I think Maverick was around one, we found one just like for date nights and stuff like that. And then when Rick's mom or my mom, they watch the boys sporadically for us. Rick's mom stayed the night at our house for the two nights we went to celebrate for the first time last week, um, our 10 year anniversary. We had not left overnight our boys until then together. Um, and that was really special, but they're older now, they're five and eight. so. I felt comfortable. Everybody's different. Some people are comfortable like, you know, month one. It took us years, but it was really awesome. And then my mom came and helped as well. So, okay. So my two biggest tips during the baby and toddler stage is to be around other moms. Um, they do not have to be law enforcement wives. I think you'll be surprised that the wives um, or moms that are going, they're going through a lot of the similar things. Um, um, I always feel blessed that like Rick is a really active dad when he's home and you will hear from other moms that their spouses aren't even if they are not law enforcement when they're home they don't necessarily help that much or they're also working really long hours and getting home like close to bedtime so there are some similarities that you will have and so don't feel like you have to just be around like first responder wives and they're gonna be the only ones that get it um, I remember another um mom that i met through the original like mom mom baby group that facebook group that i was a part of we just really connected we we're both working moms and we would have like play dates on the weekends with our boys or like during holidays we'd be like oh are you doing anything on monday want to get together um and then her husband would travel sometimes over the weekend so then we would plan like a weekend um play date and what i would do is i would i still do this when rick he sends me his schedule ahead of time so he gets a four-week deployment period that's what his schedule is called um and 
that took me time to really like, wow, it's called deployment period. That's pretty, that's pretty intense. But anyway, I think I talked about that in another video. So I'll leave that for that. But I'll, I look ahead. He literally just sent to me yesterday. And so I put it into my Google calendar and then I have a family calendar. That's a whiteboard calendar. I will link the, that below too. Um, and I, I just write it down when he's working and I look ahead and if he's working a lot of weekends in that month, I will plan some play dates on those weekends. And you'd think that these other wives, that maybe their um, husbands are are going to be home, they wouldn't want to leave. But sometimes they do. Maybe their husband's going to do grocery shopping, or he's going to clean, or he just wants some time at home alone, and they will still want to meet up with you. So don't feel like they absolutely won't, um, because I've had such good experience that with my friend, just kind of scheduling ahead some play dates with her, and that really helped me feel like less lonely on those weekends. Um, and I think these things that I did really helped prevent me from having postpartum depression. I think I was on the verge with Maverick. <clears throat> I was a little bit better with um, Leonidas. I feel like I have allergies, so sorry that I cleared my throat like twice in this video already. Um, but for Leonidas, um, I was a different mom for him. I was more confident. I feel like when you have your second, you can see the future, okay? But also, I had Leonidas happen to be colicky. Maverick was... Um, he was two, so they're only two years apart. So I had a toddler and a baby at the same time. I think what helped me always was still to get out of the house and go places with them. And I just found places that were like gated in um, playgrounds or we would go to the beach, but it'd be like a cove kind of beach where I felt like I could watch both of them at the same time. Um, or I would try to like go to, we have like um, a zoo, the Santa Barbara Zoo, not the LA Zoo. It's kind of like a smaller zoo and I just felt like it was a more controlled environment where I could be with both of them. So I found places and spaces that were kind of like felt safe for us to go um, even when I had a baby and toddler and I was alone a lot with them. I really, really hope that this video helped you if you were watching it and you were in this baby or toddler stage. It is a lot. There's a lot of high needs. I also, as someone who is kind of getting out of that stage and is in the school age stage. Um, just, I want you to know that there is a future outside of it if you are struggling. Um, I think that was the hardest time for me. Yes, there might be hard times in the future, but because um, <clears throat> there's just so many needs and your kids do get more independent over time. They will start to do things on your own and you will have a little bit more time to yourself. And that is lovely when it happens. Um, the school age stage creates new challenges um, <clears throat> one of them for us was picking an actual school. So because I'm a working mom and Rick works, we did not feel comfortable homeschooling. Rick wanted to homeschool. He specifically wanted to do it, which is so cool. Um, I always felt like logistically, like this just isn't going to work out with both of us having a job. Um, and I always liked going to school when I was a kid. So I might be like a weirdo that way, but I'm just super social. So I like went for my friends mostly. I'm still go to school. I'm a professor, so I still love school. Um, and so I just wanted them to have that experience. But Maverick started during like the, the COVID year, basically like the 2020 year. Um, we had already been looking at schools like years before that, cause we're kind of crazy that way. And we had done some kindergarten tours. We have a lot of options and we're really lucky to have that too. I think that impacts things for us that there's private schools, magnet schools and public schools. So we had a lot of options. Um, the one that we went with is a private school. It's a private Christian school and it's pretty small. They also had a hybrid program. So because Maverick was starting during like the COVID year and I was working like kind of weird hours that um, that year I was working from home, all my courses went online. Um, we started with the hybrid program. So he would only go like three days a week and the other two days he'd be home and it was like homeschooling. And I was able to be fine with that with my job and especially because I was working from home. But the hybrid days don't always work out with the days that I would teach. So it's been not something that we could continue after that. But he actually really liked school. And so it worked out that like he just went, um, just went full time after that. And they also had a full time kindergarten day. So they go like either morning or afternoon to kindergarten. And then the other half of their day, they have something called kinder care. And it's like where all the kindergartners could go. So they're with their friends, their same kids that they're in kindergarten with. And they do like um, Bible stories and art and science and stuff like that. And like Leonidas has loved that um, 
he really got into like rocks and studying the nature and it's really cool. So anyway, that really helped me out as a working mom because even kinder, it was like a nine to three and I was able to fit my teaching schedule. Lucky that my, my boss was able to help me with that, fit it into kind of their school time because um, I cannot count on Rick to do pick up or drop off. So Rick's schedule changes a lot. It's not stable days on and off. And so I knew I needed to have a work schedule if I am a working mom to work around that and just assume, I assume that I'm always picking them up or dropping them off. Um, I wanna go back to talking a little bit about, I, I feel like I was talking about why we chose a school a little bit, but also it's a Christian school, definitely more conservative in the values that they share. There's a lot of law enforcement and fire firefighter families um, and that is part of the reason we chose the school um, the values that the school has like we share as a family in general and we just felt really good about that during a time when there was a lot of BLM and other things going on we did not want Maverick to go to school and hear negative things about law enforcement um, and so that really helped us. And actually we were originally waitlisted for the school and we were on, um, we did get into another Christian private school and that was gonna be probably our other choice. We looked into some other cool magnets that weren't Christian. They all have their pros and cons, you know, but I, I am so happy with the school that we chose. So I think like finding a school that is really um, in line with your values or homeschooling um, is really, really important um, for, for you and it was for us and um, it's just been such a blessing and I'm like love their school so much um, okay so other things I think that that's like choosing a school that's in line with your values and then um, making sure that the hours of that school really work well for you the other thing to juggle when your kids get a little older is they're gonna have like potentially other activities that they want to do so like after school activities or weekend activities um, I find that because I also am working and I'm kind of like running around like a crazy person when my boys are at school, um, sometimes I'm eating lunch like before as I'm driving to pick them up. It's a little bit crazy, but um, I, after school, I don't like there to be an activity every day. It overwhelms me and I know it overwhelms them. And I also like to cook dinner. I like to have a healthy dinner for our um, for us in the evening. And when we have after school activities are like backing up and we're getting out at six and my boys go to bed around 8, 8.30 and they are usually ready by then. It's such a juggle to like get everything done alone myself. We get home, I have to make dinner, I have to clean up the kitchen. I like to make lunches at night. It helps me to feel less crazy in the morning, but that also adds like time in the kitchen at night. Um, and then they need to take their baths or showers but Leonidas still needs help. Maverick's really independent, um, but because Leonidas still needs help, it's like a lot on just me. And so I feel like I'm fine to have like two or three activities. Um, two is probably better for me, like, oh, a Monday and a Wednesday or something. And then if we wanna do one on the weekends, that's fine. Um, but I found when they have too many, I get overwhelmed, makes me grumpy, right? And then I'm not a good mom. So finding like a balance for you, maybe you love being busy after school and that's totally fine, everybody's different. So that's another tip that I would suggest like as your kids get older to kind of think about that, the scheduling. The other thing is that we have, I've had experiences that were kind of negative um, in certain after school activities. We don't do those anymore. <laughs> that where like that BLM, that kind of like negative police talk um, has happened, or we had someone criticize Rick's um, having a gun on him, even though he is law enforcement, off-duty law enforcement, which is legal here in California. And we didn't go back to that, you know? So we find places that I feel like people are not gonna talk that way. It's not political. Um, they don't need to be like pro-police, but like, I just don't want any negative talk about my family, you know, in front of my boys. Um, jiu-jitsu has been like a really like pretty consistent like we've been to different jiu-jitsu studios that they're pretty consistent space that is like usually pro police um, and definitely not going to have any negative talk about that and Maverick like skateboarding I feel like skateboarding there's nothing been political said ever we've been going to that for two years like classes for skateboarding so just finding places that you feel like are comfortable for you and supportive of your values and your family are really important 
this video is getting way longer than I thought. So I hope that this was super helpful. Let me know if you have any other questions. I'm happy to make another video in the future on um, just raising kids. And this is where I'm at. So um, in the future, maybe I can make another video as they get older. I feel like the next stage will be teen years. So not ready to have two teen boys, but I know it's coming. Um, yeah, and leave your advice in the comments. Um, any questions you have or advice that you have, anything that I didn't address. Um, this is a community and love to hear your advice, um, especially if you've had a different experience than me or you are further on as a mother um, and police wife. So thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. I'm posting more consistent on Instagram, so come and follow me there. I also started posting on Facebook um, and I have a small following there, but just trying to build it up. So go ahead and follow me there too. And all of them are heels and holster consistent meme on there. So I hope you have a great day. See you in the next one.